So here we are. And we're going to start by analyzing um, over and over again, actually, I have a whole bunch of them here, about six, analyzing rational functions. So yeah, I thought that was a little blurry, so I rewrote it. The, the first rational function we're going to analyze is 3x plus 1 over x. So let's talk about this. This is the numerator. And this is the denominator. It's a fraction. but kind of an ugly fraction, an algebraic fraction. And like everything else algebraic, we have to analyze it. That is the first question for analyzing is almost always, what is the domain? And for rational functions, that means find out what the domain cannot be. And the one truth that remains the same always is that the denominator can never equal zero. Very important, denominator cannot equal zero. Because in real life, that means you have an explosion happening. In power plants, the action that goes on is described in fractions. And if a denominator goes to zero, if it gets close to zero, then that means the pressure is building up to the point of exploding. Nothing is holding it back anymore. So if we remember that, then the way you find the domain is you set the denominator. Whatever is in the denominator. Equal to zero. So let's do that. All we've got is, is an X. So X cannot equal zero. Now, if you're writing this in set builder notation, you'll write all X such that X cannot equal zero. If you're writing it in interval notation, then here's zero, here's X equals zero. All the numbers on the left are okay. All the numbers on the right are okay just not zero itself. So in interval notation, you would write this as negative infinity to zero, but not zero, unioned up with the other side of zero. Here you've got the left side of zero. Here's the right side of zero. And so it all depends on what you're looking at. OK. So that will always be true. Regardless of what you have in the denominator, the domain is going to be what you get when you set the denominator equal to zero. And that will be what X cannot equal. Whatever X is, that makes the denominator equal zero. Now, vertical asymptotes you may not have heard of before. But a vertical asymptote is what X cannot equal. Almost all the time, 
whatever you've listed here that has to be taken out of the domain that is not in the domain will be your vertical asymptotes. So the equation of the vertical asymptote is x equals zero. And I'm about to turn my phone off. But first, I'm going to draw the vertical asymptote for you. This is the number that is not allowed to be in the domain in this particular problem. So I will have a dashed line going up and down through the number that X cannot equal. This is called the vertical asymptote. It's a limit. If you take college algebra, you'll learn a lot about limits. Vertical, no, that's too high and it'll get lost. We'll do it one more time here, vertical. asymptotes. Okay. Now, next question. There are no points of discontinuity. There will be later and you'll see how it works. A point of discontinuity is also called a hole. And what you end up with is a hole in the line that makes the graph. But you only get it when there's cancellation. Now this probably doesn't mean anything to you right now, so don't worry about it. A horizontal asymptote. Well, the first thing you need to know is that the asymptotes act as a frame for the graph. One thing will always be true of vertical asymptotes. Let's go to this. One thing will always be true of vertical asymptotes, and that will be that the graph can never, ever, ever cross a vertical asymptote. Graph can never cross a vertical asymptote. Okay. On the other hand, the graph can cross a horizontal asymptote. It usually doesn't.
a horizontal asymptote is a true limit. It's a line, a horizontal line, that the graph gets close to when X is very, very large in the positive direction or very, very large in the negative direction. That is, when it's out near the um, infinities. Okay, so a horizontal asymptote would be a horizontal line that the graph gets really, really close to way out here or way out here. It doesn't have to be close to it near the y-axis, but way out at the infinities. It's like end behavior. We talked about end behavior for polynomials. This is end behavior for rational functions, but not all rational functions have a horizontal asymptote. So we're going to be talking about when they do and when they don't and what the horizontal asymptote is. All right, so here, the highest degree term on top is 3x because the degree of this term is one. The degree of a constant is zero. Degree one, degree zero. So this is the highest degree term. On the bottom, this is the highest degree term. It's a degree one term because of the invisible one power. Degree one. To find the horizontal asymptote, you look at, look at the highest degree term on the top. How shall I write this? Okay, let's do it this way. I'm gonna do it in blue. Highest degree term on top and the highest degree term on the bottom and you make a fraction out of it or out of them. Okay, so that's going to be a 3x from the numerator and an x from the denominator. And not only do these x's have invisible one powers, they, this, the x, also has an invisible one coefficient. When the two degrees are the same, notice that the x's cancel out. And you're left with 3 over 1, which is 3. Very convenient when the, when the x's cancel out. So, the, the, the equation of the horizontal asymptote, because it's horizontal, is y equals 3. That's the equation of the horizontal asymptote. Now, what does it look like? Let's go draw it, because you'll have to draw it. 
Y equals three. Well, we go to three. Oh, I'll make it blue. Why don't I make it blue? That way there will be a definite difference. A horizontal asymptote, Y equals three, is a line through Y equals three, although I have to admit, it's going to be a dashed line because it's really not there, but we need it to be a frame. This is the horizontal asymptote, and of course it goes on forever. We call it the ha. Okay, I don't really have anywhere to write it. If I write it over here, it'll disappear. So I'm going to put H A. You know, if you get too close to the edge, it doesn't print. So you have to be careful. H A is what the horizontal asymptote is called the ha 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 ha. And in fact, while we're at it, let's go back to the vertical asymptote that is called a va. So you have a va and a ha. There, it's a va. The red one's a va, the blue one's a ha. Okay, now, like I said, we're gonna do this over and over again. So right now, this may be very alien to you, but by the time we finish today, you will be experts. So let's find the x-intercepts, if there are any. To find the x-intercepts, all you do is consider the numerator. I'm going to put it down here. Consider the numerator, the top. only we don't even look at the bottom when we're looking for the x intercepts so the numerator here is 3x plus 1 and you set it equal to zero, and you solve that equation. Subtract one from both sides. One minus one is zero, leaving me with three X on the left. And zero minus one, which is negative one on the right. Then let's continue this. I'll have 3x equals negative 1, and then divide by 3 and divide by 3, so that x equals negative 1 third, which means that the x-intercept is the point negative 1 third, comma, zero. That's the x-intercept, and this particular problem has only one x-intercept. Negative one-third would be really, really close 
to x equals zero. So let's put it here. And I'll write negative one third. Now the y-intercept. Our function is f of x equals 3x plus 1 over x. Well, unfortunately, the y-intercept is what you get when you put a zero in for all of the x's. Right? Big problem here. This is undefined. Because there's a zero in the denominator. So what does that mean? That means there is no y intercept. That can happen. So now we have all the information we need. Except it might be a good idea to graph it and take a look. So I'm going to go to y equals. And this is what I'm going to type. Parenthesis 3x plus 1. Parenthesis closed. Divided by x. 3x plus 1 divided by x. And I hit graph. Graph. Well, that's not going to do me any good, is it? OK, OK. I'm going to push zoom and then choose six for my standard screen. All right, that's a very bad graph. It doesn't really stop there. Let me tell you what's happening there. This graph continues down, 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 all the way to negative infinity. But remember that the y-axis is your y-asymptote here. This graph can never cross the y-asymptote. So you can see it wanted to, it wanted to cross, but it can't. So it gets pushed down and away, but it's getting closer and closer and closer and closer. And eventually, our graph will be infinitely close to the y asymptote, but it will never cross. Well, our little calculator here really doesn't have the memory or the ability to draw anything that gets infinitely close. So there you go. Now I'm going to draw it for you as it is. And I think I'll choose green because I haven't used that color. Here you have the graph out at negative infinity, really, really close to this horizontal asymptote. And then the force of the y asymptote starts to push it away. And that makes it curve down. Curve down, goes through the x intercept, gets closer, gets closer, gets closer, gets closer. And it's like infinitely close. As if I could draw infinitely close, so you have to use your imagination. 
but it will never ever cross the vertical asymptote. The other, other wing, arm, I'm not even sure what it's called, comes down the side of the y-intercept. And as the x's get larger and larger, this graph gets closer and closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote. Like I said, usually the graph will not cross the horizontal asymptote, but it can cross it in close to the y y axis. So you'll probably experience that don't have out uh, there's an artist on YouTube. His name is Tim Holtz. He's very creative. And ever so often he'll look at the camera and he'll say, hey, don't freak your freak. So I will say, don't freak your freak on the rare occasion when the graph does cross the horizontal asymptote. The world will not come to an end and there will be no explosions. On the other hand, the world could come to an end if a graph, if a graph crosses the, uh, the vertical asymptote. And that is the story of analyzing our rational function, 3x plus 1 over x. We found the domain, knowing that x cannot equal 0, 0 gets taken out of the domain. This is how you would write it if you were writing in set builder. I'm going to write set. And this is interval notation, interval. So the vertical asymptote is x zero. x equals zero. The vertical asymptote, you can also think of it as a wall that stops the graph from going over where x equals zero. And thank goodness there are vertical asymptotes. There is no point of discontinuity here. You will see a point of discontinuity before we're through. The horizontal asymptote. What you do is you look at the highest degree term on the top and the highest degree term on the bottom and you make yourself a little fraction with the, high, with the top highest degree term over the bottom um, highest degree term. And notice that when the terms have the same power, when the x's rather, have the same power, they cancel out, leaving you with what's called in the book the ratio of leading coefficients, which here just gives you a 3. So y equals 3 is the horizontal asymptote. And here it is, going through y equals 3. That's a tendency. The graph will get closer and closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote as x approaches negative infinity, and the graph will get closer and closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote as the x's approach positive infinity. This is called a limit. Then we found the intercepts. The x-intercept, all you do is you take the numerator, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. We found that negative one-third on the x-axis, or written this way, negative one-third comma zero, is the x-intercept. On the other hand, the only y-intercept we would have gotten, well, I mean, you're gonna have zero over zero. I mean, you're gonna have a zero, right, on the bottom. 
No, that's a very bad thing. Means an explosion, so boom, you're dead. So am I, so now we don't have to worry. Um, however, we did stop this in time by saying no y-intercept, ha. Okay. And that is the analysis of our first rational function. All right, all of my notes are on this page, and I'm just not going to do a lot of notes written on subsequent pages because these are all alike. But you'll still learn something. So here's our second rational function f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 15 over x plus 3. When we're finding the, the domain, you only look at the bottom. You take the denominator, oops, you take the denominator and you set it equal to 0 and you solve for x, minus 3, minus 3. <clears throat> so we have x equals negative 3. Now this is the number that has to be taken out of the domain because it makes the denominator equal 0. You didn't even really have to do this step because all you would have to do is look at this and say, well, if x were negative 3, then negative 3 plus 3 would be 0. So it's obvious, obvious that x cannot equal negative 3. So we pull it out of the domain. So if you're writing in set builder notation, you would write it like this. And if you're writing in interval notation, since X cannot equal negative three, super bad no, no, then what you're going to have is Negative infinity way out here, the x's can be any numbers all the way into the left side of zero, but not zero. I, negative three, all the way into the left side of negative three. Negative infinity to the left side of negative three unioned up with the right side of negative three, all the way to positive infinity. So that's the two ways you would find your, um, your yeah, your domain. Now the domain and the vertical asymptotes are very closely related. Most of the time you can just say, OK, well. X equals negative three is going to be. My vertical asymptote, the equation of the vertical asymptote which means you have a line going up and down that acts as a wall to prevent the graph going across it. But you can't be absolutely sure because of this next question about points of discontinuity. So just to make sure your denominator does not cancel out, you need to factor the top and factor the bottom. You do this after you find the domain. Okay. 
the domain will always be X cannot equal negative three, written this way or that way. Okay, so let's factor up here. One is the number in front of X squared, so I can use the easier factoring method, grouping method rather, X and X. And then I look at 15 and I say to myself, well, what are some of the factors of 15? Well, three times five and three plus five equals positive eight. And not quite what I'm looking for, but 15 is a positive number. So it will also equal negative three times negative three. And if I add negative three plus negative three uh, plus negative five, I will get negative eight. So let's do this. Minus three minus five over X plus three. No, there is no cancellation. If this were X minus three, then yes, there would be cancellation. Or if that were X plus three, there would be cancellation, but they're not. So there is no cancellation. Therefore, the equation of the vertical asymptote really is X equals negative three. And you're going to see what happens when there is cancellation. I'm saying that for the sake of the people who got here later, but it hasn't happened yet. So when it doesn't happen, you can be pretty secure in knowing that the equation you get from setting X plus three equal to zero right here, that is the equation of the vertical asymptote, otherwise called the VA, vertical asymptote. Now I'm going to, and it's just more fun if you use your, your colored pencils or colored pens, just more fun. Why not make this fun? I'm going to circle negative three here and make a dashed line going up. And there's my vertical asymptote, my VA. The vertical asymptote acts as a wall to stop the graph from going through where X would be negative three, which would cause negative three plus three equals zero on the bottom, which would cause in real life an explosion at a power plant, it could happen, but in math life, it's also called an explosion or just plain undefined. Makes the whole fraction undefined. So there are no points of discontinuity. No hole, which is what a point of discontinuity is. Now, the horizontal asymptote. <clears throat> we take the highest degree term from the top and the highest degree term from the bottom, and we make a fraction out of them. So this is X squared over X.
And in fact, that's 1x squared over 1x. Notice what happened last time. The x is canceled because they were both x to the 1. They were identical. And I got 3 over 1, which is 3. But this time, they're not identical. When you cancel these, you're still going to have x. And at the moment, x is moving, well, since this is behavior at infinity and negative infinity, x is going to equal infinity or x is going to equal negative infinity if it could equal infinity but it can't because infinity is a symbol blah 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 but if it could equal infinity or negative infinity x would become infinitely large So how are you going to have an infinitely large horizontal asymptote? That would be y equals infinity. Or y equals negative infinity. To which you get a big question mark. Huh? So no, when this happens, when the when the leading terms do not cancel, but you get left with x to any power, there is no horizontal asymptote. There is something called an oblique asymptote, but we're not going to talk about it in this class. If you take calculus, you'll learn about it. But it's enough in this class to say, no, there's no, no ha. Isn't that sad to not be able to find a laugh? Oh well. X intercepts. There's a rule first. I'm not into rules. Why memorize rules? But here's the rule. You compare your leading terms. If the highest degree term on the top in the numerator is higher than the highest degree term on the bottom, the denominator, then you will not have um, a horizontal asymptote. You can memorize it, or you can see why. Notice here, up here, the X's cancel out, so they will not be getting large to positive infinity or very, very small to negative infinity. That's not going to happen. They won't have the opportunity because the X is canceled. That's why you're left with 3 over 1, which is 3. But here they don't cancel. So you're going to be left with an infinity or a negative infinity. Huh? Can't happen. So no horizontal asymptote. And that's why. OK, X intercepts. X intercepts. You take the numerator, the top, and you set it equal to zero and solve for X. So this is X squared minus 8X plus 15.
and we already factored it. I set each factor equal to zero. Add three. X equals three. Add five, add five. X equals five. So your X intercepts are three zero and five zero. Now remember X could not equal negative three, but positive three is okay. It's great. You're going to have two X intercepts. 3 and 5. OK. Now the y-intercept. We have f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 15 over x plus 3. The y-intercept is always, for any kind of function, f of 0. That's the code for putting a 0 in every x. So 0 squared minus 8 times 0 plus 15. Well, now it looks like an H, doesn't it? OK. Plus 15 over, over 0 plus 3. Well, that's going to be 15 over 3. which is five. Now this is five on the y axis. So your y intercept is the point zero five. And it's located Here. All right. Usually I can guess what the graph is going to look like, but I actually really need to use my graphing calculator. very important you put parentheses around the top and parentheses around the bottom anytime the numerator and denominator have more than one term. Well, in this, the, of the numerator has one, two, three terms, and the denominator has one, two terms. So I am going to have to write it like this in the calculator. Parentheses, x squared minus 8x plus 15, divided by parentheses, x plus Three. OK.
Um, right, so back here. Here we go. Left parenthesis, x squared minus 8x plus 15, parentheses closed, divided by parenthesis x plus 3, parentheses closed. Now let's look at what this looks like, given you might have to adjust the windows. Window. Uh-huh, okay. Where's the other part? <gasps> I'm going to have to adjust the window just so I can see the whole thing. Because there's something else, there's bound to be something else on the other side of negative three. So, I'm going to go out to negative 20 in the X direction, and I'm going to go up. So Y max is up. I'm going to go up to 20 in that direction, and I just want to see if I can see more. There's bound to be something else. All right, just bear with me for a minute. Window. I'm going to go to negative 50 out to the left um, and make my scale 5, otherwise it'll be a big blobby uh, line. You'll learn how to play with your calculator if you stick with math. Okay, now let's look. Huh? I said negative five and not negative 50. Negative 50. How could there be nothing out there? Ooh, I bet it's down. I can't let things go. All right, we're putting the whole thing. I don't really need it there. I'm going to go to negative 50 in the Y direction and change the scale, the Y scale to 5. Okay, this is the last bit of time I'll waste for... Ah, I knew it had to be there. I knew it. I knew it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, then I will waste more of your time. Let's just give the give up the ghost as it were. There's an invisible line going up and down, and that is your oblique asymptote, also called a slant asymptote. You don't have to know that. I'm just telling you. All right. Yes. Yes. I'm happy. Are you happy? So, our graph is going to look something like this. Although it's smoother than this. And then it becomes like a straight line. And out here, 
of course, you're not really going to see it if it's way down there, but pretend. Pretend you can see it. Now I know you're thinking, oh, what if that happens on a test? <sighs> Don't hyperventilate. It won't. This is learning. The most you would have to do is answer these questions. But you're not going to get any wacky graphs. At least not if I know they're there first. OK, so we found the domain by setting the denominator equal to zero and solving for X. We found the vertical asymptote by using the equation we got when we set the denominator equal to zero. X equals at negative three. X equals the number that have that, or the numbers that have to be taken out of the domain because they'll make the denominator equals zero. There were no points of discontinuity because there was no cancellation. There will be cancellation. Uh, there was no horizontal asymptote because the power on top was greater than the power on the bottom, and we ended up getting a ridiculous answer. The x-intercepts, we factored the top and set it, well, we set the top equal to zero, factored, solved for x. In other words, we solved a quadratic equation and we found there were two x-intercepts and that's how that happened. And the y-intercept is what you get when you put a zero in for every x. So we got 15 over 3, which is 5. The y-intercept was 0, 5. OK, and guess what? It's time for a 10-minute break. So be back at 9.10. I'm going to shut off. Well, I'm not going to shut off my machine. I am going to shut down this meeting so I can restart my computer and then um, I will restart it and I'll be here. So see you in 10 minutes. Temporary bye-bye.